I help? Can, I, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay. Um, ma'am, it's just like, like, um, um, the formula. Is there a formula? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, ma'am, go through the formula, please. So there's a whole bunch of different formulas for probability. Um, I forgot the. I think it's the uh experimenting one. Is that what's called experimenting probability? Um. Okay, so are you talking about the difference between experimental and theor like theoretical probability? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Let's let's talk about that quickly. Experimental and theoretical. Okay. Let's start here. And you'll understand why I'm gonna go backwards. If you've got a coin that you can flip, what are your two options if you flip that coin? Where did Tristan go? Oh, Tristan, I'm unmuting you again. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Um, no, it's okay. Heads, wait, heads or tails? Yeah, okay. You could, you could get heads or you could get tails, okay? So theoretically, in this theoretical world, what is my chance of getting heads and what is my chance of getting tails? Is it one over two? Yeah, because there's two options and there's one, I, I could either get heads out of tails or I could get tails, I mean, heads out of heads or tails or tails out of heads or tails. So there's two outcomes, but I'm only, the heads would only be one of those, right? Experimental is saying, let's say we take that coin and we flip that coin six times. Okay, and so I'm flipping this coin. I got heads, then I got heads again, then I got tails, then I got heads, then I got heads, then I got tails. Okay, so I flipped this coin six times. Those are my six flips. How many times did I get heads? Um, four times. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So the probability of my experimental outcome here would be four out of six because there were six times that I flipped that coin and four of them, I got heads. And that's going to simplify down to two out of three. And if I was looking at this experimental version of my tails, I got two out of six there, which would simplify down to one out of three. So the difference between experimental and theoretical is that you see those numbers are different. The idea is if you flipped like a thousand coins, then that number would get close to 500, 500. So the more experiments you do, the closer to the theoretical numbers you would get. But experimental, it's obviously experimental. You're not going to get exactly what those numbers should be every time. Does that make okay, sense? Um, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. So don't like panic about probability with formulas. Just think about it as in like, how many are there out of how many options? And then it's much easier. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. All right, guys. So that's just a little thing about probability. If you guys have other issues, though, just let me know. They asked how many sides does a hexagon have? So hex is six. So six sides. If that helps little Kara. Yeah, well, you were right. Nice. Nice job. So hex is six and then sept is seven and then oct is eight. That's how we know what our different sides are. Okay, guys, today we are going to work on some factorization. So we're going to be doing some tricky questions today. Um, we're going to try and combine all of our different knowledges about factorization in these mixed questions that we're going to deal with today. And I want you to ask as many questions as possible, all right? This is your lesson to prepare for your exams. So if there are things that you don't understand, you need to just ask. Um, if you're wanting to ask, you can either put your question in the chat and then both Yolanda and I can see it. And so one of us can reply or you can pop your hand up and we can just talk about whatever you're struggling with. All right. Let's go my pebs, we are ready. Okay, so. Before we even look at this question, we have to think when we factorize, we have to think of a very specific order that we follow when we do any type of factorization. What is the first thing that we have to look for when we factorize? What is the first thing that we have to look for? 
every single time when we factorize. Come on, I know you know. There we are. Nice. Okay. First thing we always have to look for is, is there a highest common factor? Okay. We have no option. That's always the first thing we have to do. If there is a highest common factor, we have to take it out before we do anything else. Okay. Next, either we've taken out the highest common factor and there's a second step, or we couldn't take out a highest common factor and we're trying to figure out what to do. We're going to look for dots okay and dot stands for difference of two squares i'll write that in here for those of you who don't know difference of two squares okay and so by its name it's telling you what we're looking for we have to have a square number we have to have a difference that's my difference it's a minus sign and then we'd have to have another square number so it's a difference between two squares Come on, hello, don't panic. We're going to look at how to find that highest common factor with pretty much every question we do today. And I'll show you the longest possible way and then we'll get quick at them as we go. Okay. We're also going to see if we could do a trinomial. So if we have a trinomial, generally, we would have like an x squared. Then we would have something x and this could be a plus or a minus. And then we could have a plus or a minus and a constant. Okay, so we'd have like an x squared, an x, and then a constant. We can look to see if we have a switcheroo. Sometimes we have a switcheroo. So that's when our brackets look almost the same, except that the numbers in the second bracket are flipped around. And sometimes we can look and see if we have a highest common bracket. Okay, so a highest common bracket is actually kind of the same as the highest common factor, but I'm going to pop it all the way down at the bottom because it's one of our harder questions and they're quite rare. Okay, so this is sort of what we think about when we think about factorization. Let's look at this first question. So I'm going to go through this one super slowly with you. I'm going to show you which steps are absolutely necessary in your test or exam and which ones you don't have to do, but they might help you understand a bit more. And then we'll sort of work our way through this. Okay. So first of all, in the question, they would need to say factorize. All right, so that would be in my question. And we would see we've got two terms over here. The whole purpose of factorizing is to go from many terms to one term. So we need to make this one term. We're going to start by looking for our highest common factor because that's always how we start any type of factorizing. And when we look for our highest common factor, we're going to start with our numbers. So we've got 32 over there and we've got 50 over there. So what number, I don't care about the variables right now, what number, what is the highest number that can go into 32 and can go into 50? What is the highest number that can go into those two numbers? Okay, Nati is saying two, are we agreeing? Are we disagreeing? So a cut four will definitely go into 32, but it's not going to go nicely into 50 for us. So we're going to stick with two. So we're going to take out two as our highest common factor. That's our first start. Then we're going to look at our variables. Okay, we've got an A cubed over there and we've got an A over there. So of those two variables, we always take the one that has the smallest exponent. Okay, so this one's got a to the power of three, and this is just a to the power of one. So we're going to take out a to the power of one. We're always going to take out the smallest exponent. Then we're going to have a look at our b's. We've got no b in our first term, and our second term, we've got b squared. But because we don't have a b in our first term, we can't take b out at all. There's nothing we, we can do. Okay, so we've taken out our highest common factor of 2a. That's our highest common factor. When we're working out what goes inside this bracket, what we're doing is we're taking the first term, we're dividing it by our highest common factor, and then we're taking our second term and we're dividing by our highest common factor. So we're saying 32a cubed divided by 2a minus 50ab squared divided by 2a. Okay, so let's try and work that out. So that's took here. 32. Divided by 2 will give me 16. And a cubed divided by a gives me a squared. 
Let me do that up here. 50 divided by 2 gives me 25. My A's are going to cancel and I would be left with B squared. Okay. Now I told you I would show you which steps are necessary for your test or exam. That top step you wouldn't need to do. I've just put it there so you understand what's going on. But this step is very necessary. Before I move on, does anyone have any questions on how we got to this point over here? This is your time to ask. So if anyone doesn't understand how we got either the 2A or the two terms that are inside that bracket, just ask. Y'all are doing good, my pebs. It looks like everyone understand, hopefully. Okay, all happy, yeah. Okay, so now that we're, how, how did you get the 20? Oh, it's an A, not a nine. Take screenshot, my pebs. Okay, so now we're going to look inside this bracket. And inside this bracket over here, you'll see we have two terms. They are both square numbers. And there's a minus sign, which means I can do difference of two squares. Because there is a difference, there's a minus sign. There are two terms, one, two, and they are both squares. All right. When we do difference of two squares, we always create two brackets. And then we find the square root of our first term. So the square root of 16a squared is going to be 4a. That's going to go at the front of both of my brackets. We're going to have a plus and a minus. And then we're going to do the square root of our second term, which will give me 5b. And that will go at the back of both of my brackets. And that's where this question would end. That would be the last step that I could do here. Okay, Zanele, why can't we have six as our highest common factor? So we can't have six as our highest common factor because six doesn't go into 32 and six doesn't go into 50. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a number that can go into both of these numbers, so both 32 and 50, without any remainder. And the only number that can go into both of them without a remainder is two. And then this step over here, that's our difference of two squares. So whenever we do difference of two squares, Kamakhelo, we always have the same setup. So I'm just going to write it up over here. Um, okay, so this is for difference of two squares. If we have x squared minus y squared, so it doesn't really matter as long as they square numbers and there's a minus sign, we're always going to have two brackets. So one, two. We're always going to have a plus and a minus every time. Okay, then over here, we're going to say the square root of our first term. So the square root of x squared would give me x. Those are going to be my first two terms and the square root of our second term. So that would be y. Those would be my second. Every time we do dots, it's going to be that same setup. So we'll always have those two brackets. We'll always have a plus and a minus, And then we'll do the square root of each for the first and second term. Okay. Guys, if you have questions, you mustn't feel embarrassed to ask. You must just ask away. Um, and then we're, we're, I'm happy to help. Would it be a problem if you put the plus and the minus? No. So if you wrote this the other way around, so if you said like x minus y, x plus y, that's not a problem at all. As long as there's one plus and one minus, it's not a problem. Okay. All right, guys, you might want to take a screenshot of this page because I think it might help you as we move on. 
And then we're going to try our next question. We okay. having little geniuses today. Y'all yes. understand this word. Nice, my pibs. Okay. All right. Okay, so I want you to think about that process that we've just spoken about. You're going to start by looking for your highest common factor. You're going to take it out if there is one. And then after you've taken it out, you're going to see if there's anything else you can do. And once you have an answer, you can either pop your hand up for me and you can tell me what you got, or you can pop it in the chat and we can see if we agree or if we disagree on what you get. So just do it step by step. Highest common factor first. Then look at what you're left with. See if there's something you can do. And remember, when you're looking for your highest common factor, you're first looking at your numbers. Then you're looking at your variables. And hopefully what I've done on the screen will help a little bit. So I like the five. I think the five is a really good start. But have a look at those variables. See if you think we can take out something more than just five. Unati, I see your hand. I know it's going to be to answer. Well, I'm fairly certain. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain. So I'm just going to give everyone one more minute and then I'll come to you. Okay. Tristan, I'm liking that as the highest common factor. Princess, I would really like that 25 if we didn't have the first term of five because the 25 would go into 50 and it would go into 125, but it won't go into five. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys 30 more seconds. And then Unati is gonna talk us through this one. All right, Unati, we're all yours. Tell me what to write. Hi, ma'am. Um, so I um say I took out five x y squared. Okay, so have a look carefully for your x. Do you, is there is there any blue highlighting happening in this third term? Oh, <laughs> so ma'am, it's gonna be five y squared. Okay, good, good. And then what's going to happen inside this bracket? Ma'am, do you also take that negative or do you leave the signs out? No, so the signs will pop them in when we when we get to each term. Okay, so it's going to be 10x squared, y squared. Okay. No, so just why? Why? Careful. Why? <laughs> it's okay. Careful with this first term. What's going to be, what's going to be left from that first term? Oh, uh, uh, x squared. Yeah, okay. x squared, good. Then we're going to do minus. I liked your 10. What did you have um, after the 10? x squared, y squared, y. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have x, y, and then we're going to have our plus. What's going to happen over here? Ma'am, we're going to say 25, y yeah. squared. Perfect. Nice. There we go. We got there. And then, ma'am, do you open your two brackets? 
No, you do a trinomial. Yeah, it's a trinomial. It's a really nasty trinomial, but it is a trinomial. I'm so proud of you for seeing it. Okay, so what do you think that trinomial is going to look like? Mom, so you're going to say eggs and eggs. Good. Ma'am, and then it's going to be five times five. So okay. you're going to use, it's going to be X, X, since the sign is a, is a plus, mm -hmm. the signs are going to be the same. So it's going to be minus in both brackets. Good. So you're going to put five and five. Good. There's one thing that's missing. Mm -hmm. This is your hint of variables. Here. Yeah. What what what's that y squared going to become in each bracket? Just the y. Yes. Well done. That was a really good question. Nice job. Well done, Anetti. <laughs> okay, so guys, let's try and talk through what just happened in that question because we've quite a hectic question. The first thing that we did over here is we took out our highest common factor. Okay, so that's our highest common factor over there. Now, it's very easy to think that we have to take out x because we saw the x's in the first two terms. But if you look at where I've highlighted, you'll see we don't have any blue highlights happening over here in the third term. There's no x over there. And so that's why we can't take out x as the highest common factor. So from our numbers, we can see we have 5. We can't take out x. And then of our y's, so those are the pink ones, the one that's the smallest is the y squared. Okay, so that's what gives me my highest common factor. Then we're filling in what would be left if we take out that highest common factor. And then what we were left with was a really nasty trinomial. We haven't done trinomials like this in a really long time. And they can be asked. Um, it would be a bit mean, but they can definitely be asked in this format. Um, but all that that is is a trinomial, which will simplify down to these two brackets over here. And remember, when we're working on a trinomial, we work with the factor pairs of that guy. So we'd have 1 and 25, and then 5 and 5. And we'd see that negative 5 minus another 5 would give me that negative 10. And that's where those are coming from. Feel free to ask questions, though. As Sunday, how can I help? Hi, um, um, Instead of writing uh, x squared, if you wrote one x squared, is it wrong? No, one x squared is perfectly fine. Totally okay to have that one. Right. No problem. And guys, if you're really struggling with factorization, if you got this stage over here right and you didn't get this step, that's okay. That's half the battle. So you've done, like, you need to be proud of, of what you do land up being able to do instead of focusing on the stuff that you're struggling with at the moment. If there's something you can do, then that's great. Okay, let's. I think we can probably fit in one more question before we jump to our brain break today. So let's just do one more and then we'll, we'll do a brain break for today. If you want to take a screenshot, take a screenshot. If you have a question, have a question. Before Brian the break. <laughs> Brian is going to join us at half past. Oh, I think this one will be a bit too easy for you. Let's rather go with, let's go with this one. Okay. Same idea, guys. Look for your highest common factor and you start by looking at the numbers. Then you look at the one variable and then you look at the other variable. Take out your highest common factor, see what you're left with, see if you can factorize further. Let's try and get this one 100% right. So if you've only been getting one step correct at this point, let's see if you are able to get the whole thing right in this question. Let's go, my people. You know what's the nice thing today? That is only 35 of you. So you can ask questions. No one is yeah. going to be, you know, lots of hands everywhere. Hey, your hand comes. You definitely will have to ask your question directly to teacher Sam. You don't even <laughs> teacher Jen. Yes, yeah, that means it's, it's just easier to say Sam. I know, I know, I know. 
<laughs> okay, my babes, do you have that advantage? It's not a lot of us. So you're getting all the attention. Teacher Jan will give you all attention, my babes. Um, Zanella, just be careful with that highest common factor. Um, four can go into eight, but four can't go into 18. There we go, princess. So that's your number. Then look at your variables. So look at which has got the smallest exponent of your A's, which has got the smallest exponent of your B's. And then think about what's going to be left in that bracket. Let's see who can figure this one out from top to bottom. And I'll show you exactly where the marks would lie for a question like this. So this one would probably be worth, I'd say, three marks. This question. Maybe four, if your teachers are feeling generous. So let's see who can get three out of three. That could be very exciting. Hey, I'm going to give you guys, is 30 seconds enough? If it's not, let me know. You don't have to tell everyone. You can send me a direct message. If you're needing time, just let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to give you 30 more seconds and we'll go through this one together. Let's go, my pebs. We can do this. Let's go. Remember, if you're stuck, you do have to ask. Yeah. Like this. Teacher, teacher Jan can direct you. <laughs> Palessa, I want to see your answer. <laughs> hey, Palessa, my cheerleader, what did you write? Palessa is like 100% going to go into like some kind of um, like, you know, like those speakers who are yeah. like those like inspirational <laughs> speakers who like comes to school it has to do with me uh, anything yeah <laughs> she'll, she'll sit right in that's what place is going into motivational yeah. speakers thank you Samahela. that was thanks that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> okay let's go through this question so if we have a look here we're going to look at our numbers first all right so we've got eight and eighteen so the number that can, the highest number that can go into both of those is two. We're going to take out a two. And then we're going to look at our a's. We've got a to the power of four, and then we've got a squared. So we can take out a squared. Then we look at our b's. We've got b, and we've got b cubed. So we can take out b. All right. Inside our brackets, eight divided by two gives me four. I'm going to need another two a's. And my B's are sorted. 18 divided by 2 gives me 9. My A's would cancel, but I still need two B's. So if you got to this point here, I want you to give yourselves one mark for getting the 2A squared B and one mark for the 4A squared minus 9B squared. Now, if you took out the wrong thing, you can still get something called a continued accuracy mark. So I think some of you took out 2AB. If you took out 2AB and inside your bracket, you got 4A cubed minus 9AB squared. Okay. If you did that, this is wrong, but they would give you one mark for working that one out correctly. Okay, so this is called continued accuracy marks. Those of you who got one so far, those of you who got two, that's great. Anything is progress. 
Okay, now from here, so we've got 2a squared b. This over here, this is our magic difference of two squares again. So it's going to turn into two brackets. We're going to have a plus and a minus. We're going to find the square root of our first term. That's going to be 2a. That's going to go at the front of both of our brackets. And we're going to do the square root of our second term. That's going to be 3b. It's going to be the back of both of our brackets. And that is our final third mark. Now, if you had done this, you wouldn't have been able to do difference of two squares. So if you did that, you would only be able to get one out of three. If you followed this way, then you could get three out of three. How did this question go? So, okay, look at you. Nice job, Bruce. Nice job, Chakondi. What if the 9b was cubed? Okay, so if it was cubed, um, both of them would actually have to be cubed. And you, the, you, there is a way to factorize that, but you only learn it in grade 10. So at the moment, you would need to take out a highest common factor before dealing with that. <gasps> nice job. Look at you guys go. Well done. Well done, my pebs. You deserve the brine and the break. <laughs> well done. You guys did well. Screenshots. Okay, take a, take a screenshot, take a moment. If you have a question, ask a question. And then we're going to jump down to Brian. I'm going to warn you that it's tricksy today. Brian has brought something tricksy. So my advice, what's my advice? My advice is to look carefully. That is my advice. My advice is to look very, very carefully. And if someone gets this right answer, I think I will squeal. I'll be so excited. So let's see. There are many traps in this question. I have given you something similar to this before. For those of you who have seen the similar one, you may be in a better position than others. No, Kira, that is never the, never the solution. I am wanting to know what that question mark is. That's a difficult question for me to answer, Princess. And you'll understand my hesitation later. Although maybe you could take my hesitation as a hint. Hmm. Hmm. 31 is not correct, Sonke. Twenty-seven is not correct. Also, a difficult question for me to answer, Princess. <laughs> just in things, just just, just in things that she's seen it. <laughs> not twenty-five. Not nineteen. Thunder, what answer are you sitting on? So, ma'am, I don't think I'm right, but I'll try. Okay. So, um, must I start, must, must I start at the top? I, no, just tell me your final answer, because if your final answer is wrong, then we'll know. I've got 26. 26 is correct. Okay, so 26 is correct. So, you could, you could definitely be on the right track here. Okay, so let's go from the top. So I said seven plus seven plus seven. Okay. So seven, seven, seven. 
So seven and seven. Okay. The clocks are six per six. Okay. All of that I like so far. Yeah. And then that flower, I think it's two. Yeah. Okay. Happy so far. And then this little thing, <laughs> I think it's two. Which one? Which one do you think is two? That I have to something. The, the like caterpillar guy. Yeah, yeah. No, he's not two. How come? Oh, so your number seven. was yeah. You're yeah. Up there. You're so close. <laughs> like, like on the verge. Like okay. you have everything correct. Now you just have to check and put things in perspective. I what mean, do you? Like, Twelve, nineteen. I promise it's not nineteen. Okay, so like everyone, everyone should be happy up to where we are right now because nothing funny has happened up until this point. So at the moment, everything is like is we're all good. This is where things start getting a little bit cuckoo. Okay, so down here there are two flowers, which means that this is going to be four because there's two flowers. Okay, and then this clock is at five o'clock and this clock is at six o'clock so this clock is a five it's not six and then we have to think of the last thing Kira, is your name samantha oh my gosh i was like what okay then for the last one okay this caterpillar over here this is where it got really sneaky. First of all, these caterpillars have a flower, okay? So a caterpillar without a flower, that means that that flower over there is two. Let me get this in the black pen. That flower in his head is two. And remember the caterpillar was seven, which means it would be one, two, three, four, five. So all of his little segments said what number it was. So this caterpillar down here doesn't have a flower, but it's got one, two, three, four, five, six segments. So it's a six. So it's four times five, which is 20, and 20 plus six, which is 26. Esti, I wasn't gonna do it. I wasn't gonna get it, my bits. I thought, you know, I thought it was completely different. I wasn't looking at it. Oh, wow, well done, well done. Yo. Guys, there was a there was a trick at every single picture. Yo, wow. <laughs> Come on, hello. Did you get it? Did you get close? Ma'am, I was so close, I got 25. Ah, oh, okay. So did you just think that it was the caterpillar without a flower? Yes. Oh, it was the sneaky caterpillar. It was the sneaky caterpillar. Nice I don't job, like Brian now. <laughs> That's okay. I think you'll survive. It's like, I don't like you, man. <laughs> okay, let's jump into some more factorization, guys. Um, what I want us to look at now is some fractions with factorization. So we're going to jump into some questions. Let's just do a nice, easy one to start. Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through this one over here. And then I'm going to let you try one by yourself. Okay, so these questions come up often. Now, the reason these questions are nasty is this, well, there's a multitude of reasons why this one's nasty. First of all, remember when you factorize, your question has to say that factorize, but in these types of questions, it doesn't. It just has to say simplify. We have to know that if we have fractions where we've got two terms chilling on the top or three terms and two terms on the bottom, basically it's not just one term that we have to factorize, okay? Because we're not allowed to cancel across terms. We are, I'm gonna write that in big letters. We are not allowed to cancel across terms. Okay, so what they want you to do in this question, the mistake that they want you to make is they want you to take that three and cancel with that three and say that your answer is X plus nine. That's what they want you to do, okay? It's wrong. That's the trap that we are not going to fall into. So we're going to look at it. We're going to see, can we factorize the top? Can we factorize the bottom? And then what can we cancel? So if we have a look at our numerator here, we've got 3x plus 9. 
I can take out a highest common factor. So I'm going to take out a highest common factor of three. And I'm going to be left with x plus three. And that is all over three. Okay. Now, up here, let me just get this in a different color. Originally, this was two terms up here. And now it is one term. And because it is one term, we are allowed to cancel. So this three can cancel with that three. And I am left with an answer of x plus three. And that is my final answer. So we have to factorize in order to allow ourselves to cancel. And then we can get our answer. Bruce, how can I help? Hello, ma'am. Hi. Ma'am, did we, ma'am, we got three because uh, square root of nine, right? No, so when we take out a highest common factor, what we're doing, so we take out three, we're taking our first term and we're dividing it by that highest common factor and we're taking our second term and we're dividing it by it. So we get three X divided by three, which gives us X and nine divided by three, which gives us three. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay, does anyone else have any questions about this that they are currently seeing? This little fraction situation before I give you one to try by yourselves. Yes, uh, Princess, how can I help? Oh no. I can see you're unmuted, sweetheart, but I can't I can't hear you. Um, if you have headphones that you're working with, try and unplug them and plug them back in again. Maybe pop your question in the chat for me. Oh, good. I'm glad that you understand. That's good. Um, Princess, when I see your question, I'll pop back up here. Okay. Okay, guys, I want you to have a look at this one. I want you to think, how can I factorize that numerator? So think about what you can take out to factorize, cancel what you can cancel, and then get yourself a final answer. Let's see how you do. Unati, are you meaning you just divided both? So like you divided that and you divided that. If that's what you're meaning, then that's 100% okay. Yes, princess. Okay. And I'm so glad you asked that. Okay. The the first thing that your teachers are trying to do in this situation is they are trying to trick you because of the word simplify. Because when you see simplify, you forget that you have to factorize sometimes. Okay. So as soon as you have a fraction like this, and you can see that you have got two terms somewhere, either at the top or at the bottom. Okay. So when I'm saying two terms, I'm meaning it's not just one term. Factorize. And once you have factorized, then you can cancel. And even in questions where you could just divide by each of them by the bottom turn, you can still factorize. So you wouldn't lose any marks by factorizing. So it's just in your best interest to factorize. You're most welcome. Okay, so then you go through this one. So what we do here is we're going to look for our highest common factor. So I'm going to set it up the same way we've been looking at them. We're going to look at our numbers. We've got a two and a four. Okay. Then our A's, we've got A squared and A. And our B's, we've got B cubed and B to the power of five. Okay. So of my numbers, two is the highest number that can go into both of those. So I'm going to take two out. Then I look at my A's. A and A squared, my smallest is A. And then I've got B cubed and B to the power of five. So it's going to be b cubed. Okay. 
Now inside my bracket, I'm going to be left with a squared. If you want to have one a squared, that's fine. Minus two b squared. Okay. And that is all over two a b squared. That's our first step. Now, there's lots of places in this question where they are going to try and trick you. So we're going to talk about that. But if you got to this first step, then you should be really proud of yourselves and you should be feeling good. Oh, sorry, that should just be an A, not A squared. So if you got to this point here, you should be feeling really happy with life and feeling positive and feeling good about what's going on. And then we're going to see what that next step is and where that next trick is. Okay, so my twos can cancel. My A's can cancel. Now I've got B cubed at the top and I've got B squared at the bottom. So those B squares are going to cancel with those B cubes and I'm going to be left with one B, right? So what I'm going to be left with, and you can write it as a fraction, but you don't have to. I'm going to be left with B, open bracket, A minus 2B squared. And you can put it over 1 if you want to, but you don't have to. So you can just have your answer as B, open bracket, A minus 2B squared. The important thing is to remember is to not to cancel anything else further than that. Do we have any little geniuses? So you would have gotten one mark for taking out, that's for taking out 2AB cubed. And then I'm going to give you one mark for getting the A and one mark for the 2B squared. And then one mark for your final answer here. Do we have any little geniuses who got all four? Do we have people who got one? Because I'm still proud if you got one. If we got two... And if we didn't get any, try and let me know where you're struggling so I can try and help you out a little bit. Asandi, can you see where you went wrong? Do you see what it was wanting from you now? Because getting them wrong is 100% fine. If we learn from it, then it doesn't matter. Nice job, Sanele. Okay, the variables. Yes, exactly, Tristan, because think of, it's, a, it's, the, it's a form of dividing. That's okay, Princess. We'll see you on Thursday. So, um, Tristan, that's why, some, that's why some people find it easier to write out the highest common factor using it as a fraction. It sometimes gets a bit messy when we're dealing with a fraction and a fraction, but it's okay. So, for example, if we wrote our highest common factor of 2AB cubed, then we'd write 2A squared B cubed over 2AB cubed minus 4AB to the 5 over 2AB cubed all over 2AB squared. And then it's quite easy in here to see that those twos cancel, that I'd be left with 1A and that my Bs would cancel. So that sort of shows you how you get there. Okay, that's okay. So okay, as long as you see how we got there, that's what matters. All right, guys, take a screenshot and uh, hopefully we can get through at least one more question. For the evening, because it's already 10 to 6. For those of you who live in Cape Town with me, the, like for us Cape Tonians, it's so sunny outside still. Oh, wow. Yeah, I left it's all still like It's still like the middle of the day. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> I am jealous, everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, I wonder if I could do one like this. Okay, this guy. Okay. It is sunny. Hey, Kira. Okay, so I want you to give this one a try. Um, so this one you have to factorize both. So you're going to need to factorize your numerator 
and you're going to have to factorize your denominator. I'm going to give you a solid couple of minutes to give this a try by yourselves. Um, it will be worth at least four marks. And then we're going to go through the answer and see who can get it right. We can do this map, babe. Let's go. One last stretch, my people. I'm throwing everything around. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord, shit, I'm just praying to God that <laughs> this lasts until the six o'clock. <laughs> I'm using data, so I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm sure it will survive. Just Hi. Yeah. Try Justin. You can do this, Justin. Take a step by step. <laughs> and I'm not able to can. It will can very soon. Don't worry. Okay. I know not everyone might be finished, um, but I'm gonna start talking about it just because our time is running low. Okay, so for our numerator, what we have is a trinomial. And when we're doing a trinomial, we work with our factor pairs of our constant. So we've got one and 12, two and six, and three and four. We need to get the answer of positive one. So we're gonna have negative three plus four because negative three plus four is gonna give us positive one, which is what we're wanting. Okay, so we're gonna have x, minus three x plus four and that right there is two marks then we move down to our bottom and we have got difference of two squares chilling down here so we're going to have two brackets okay we're going to have a plus and a minus we're going to square root our first term the square root of x squared is x going to be x and x oh, gosh. and square root of nine which is three so we're going to have three and three and if you got that right i want you to give yourselves another mark so now we should be sitting on three as we got to this point over here oh and my cat has come to join us yes hi charlie okay and then we just need to look at what's going to cancel sorry guys is being very needy right now. I don't know what he's doing. Um, <laughs> okay, this bracket and this bracket are going to cancel each other out because they are exactly the same as each other. And so we write what we are left with. We are left with x plus four at the top and x plus three at the bottom. And we are not going to fall for the trap and cancel out those x's. We're going to leave it exactly like that. That is our final answer. And if you're worried you're going to cancel anything, just put them in brackets and then you'll know not to cancel. And that final step there is your final fourth mark. Okay.